Good morning. This is the Sunday School lesson for the New Beginning Church. Let us open up in prayer. Father God, we thank you now, Lord. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy, your grace. We thank you for another chance, another privilege, another opportunity to come before you. We pray, Father God, that you bless us, speak to us, keep us as we study your word. Bless your word to become real to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. We will begin with uh, with uh, Sister Bentley reading uh, the key verse for us, please. Do I have to go to the mic or can well, I just talk right here? It would be good. Yeah, people online are listening, so if you would use the mic, that would be good. Thank you so much. Amen. The key verse is, is found where? Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13. Just just stand up to it and talk to me. Yeah. Here? Yes, yes. ma'am. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Ephesians 6.13. Amen. Thank you. So, um, who's reading the, the story? Sister Henry, please. One of the more obvious ways that evil is evident in America is through systematic, systemic racism. From the formation of this country, our nation's leaders have subjected black people through violence, threat, and legislation. Since the agreement of the Three-Fifths Compromise, a clause in the Constitution that counted the enslaved as three-fifths of a human to appease a political agenda. The structures of racism have been in place and operating against people of color. That is the example of what exists throughout all the systems of this nation. At every level, the integrity of those agencies that are meant to support the well-being of the collective have been compromised by racism. Every Christian should be both willing and ready to engage this evil wherever it is. However, it will take more than strategy, money, and enthusiasm to engage this evil. This conflict will require spiritual equipment. This was the tone and tender of the sixth chapter of the Apostle Paul's address to the Christians in Ephesus. He understood the conflict that they would inevitably face. If they were going to be successful in rising up to overcome, they would require <coughs> spiritual armor. It is believed that at the time Paul penned his letter, he was under house arrest, being guarded by Roman soldiers. Upon looking out of his window and seeing their attire, he began to compare the equipment that made up their armor with the spiritual equipment that should make up the Christian attire. Amen. Thank you. Our lesson for the day is tools available to withstand injustice and evil. So when we look at these tools, we notice right off that these tools are not physical tools. It's not guns. It's not knives, it's not cussing, it's not fussing, it's not fist fighting. These tools are spiritual tools that God has given us to win this battle. And I want to tell you, we're in an all out fight. It's not a wrestling match, it's an all out fight. Growing up, I never, I never, never wrestled. Because if you hit me the wrong way, we're going to fight. You see, this is not, even though in the King James Version it used the word wrestle, this word wrestle means that it's a devastating, life-taking fight. And we're in a fight with the devil. We, we are in a struggle. We are in a fight with the devil. 
So the introduction, the author talks about systemic racism. He talks about racism in these great United States of America. And whenever you hear the statement, I don't see color, then you know they see color. Whenever you hear the statement, some of my best friends are black, you know there's prejudice there. Because when your best friends are black, the question becomes, how do you spend your time with them? Do you fish with them? Do you barbecue with them? Do you go out to eat with them? Because friends do these type of things. Families do these type of things. There are some people who have it right. There are some people who have gotten it right from life. There are some people that will respect all races and will approve all races. The author digs in deep and says, racism is systemic. What does that mean? Racism is systemic. Systemic. What does that mean? It's a systematic way of, of, yeah. of uh, applying racism. Okay, so the key word is system, right? right? So when you use the word systemic racism, it means more than the system being set up for us to lose. Yes, it means that the system is set up for us to lose, but it also means that the system is situated against us. When I, when I went to Dallas on a merge and, and I was a student at the time, we went to this one particular community and this community was a food desert. It was a food desert. That, mean, that means they had fast food restaurants, but they didn't have adequate grocery stores. So the people were unhealthy. In this whole zip code, the people were unhealthy because they only ate fast food. And if you notice, if you go in some neighborhoods, gas prices are lower than other neighborhoods. And usually the gas prices are lower in the neighborhoods that have all the money. So it's a, a systemic racism that exists that sets the system against us. And it puts us in a position to lose. The author talks about this to us today in his introduction, and he introdu introduces Paul's letter to the Ephesians. It is believed that Paul, Paul is on house arrest, and as he looked through the bars, he could see the Roman soldiers standing outside, and he saw the armor that he ha they had on the protection. And so he parallels this conversation for us today to the early church as well as to the church in the 21st century. So let's look at the first few verses, verses 10 through 12, verses 10 through 12, begins with finally. So he talks about children, he talks about parents, he talks about the unity of the family, then he says finally. So start Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Okay. Sister Carter, verses 13 through 18. Verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil days, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your lions girded about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take the shield of faith, wherewith we shall be able to quench the fiery dots of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Amen. Thank you. 
So when we look at these verses, we find out, first of all, it's a spiritual warfare. It's a fight. It's a spiritual fight. The devil is still mad at God. He's going to use us as pawns if we allow him to. He says, finally. He says that of all that I've said, I want to come to the conclusion. I say, finally, my brothers and my sisters. He's talking to those who are born again believers. He says, finally, in the conclusion of the matter, I want to remind you of some things. He says, finally, be strong in the Lord. This word strong, this phrase strong in the Lord means that you can't have this strength to defeat the devil on your own. You need the Lord. I told you, you can't use guns, can't use knives. You, you can't use fish. You can't get by with fussing and cussing. This is spiritual. This is above what we see every day. This is a spiritual warfare. If we can get it across that this is a spiritual warfare, then people will stop fighting each other. Am I right? People will stop jabbing at each other. Even in the church. When, when we have children that are going astray, we can't sit on the gallery and talk about it. It's a spiritual thing. Our, our children get caught up in all kinds of stuff because it's a spiritual attack. And if the devil can't get you to go through with it, it, it gets somebody close to you. I mean, he will get somebody to act a fool close to you. He will get somebody just to sell out just for a few pennies. It's a spiritual warfare. So we have to, first of all, switch our minds, change the way we think, look at things differently, and realize it's spiritual. It's not about you and me. Marriages break up because no one can see the fact that it's a spiritual warfare. Friends fall out because there's a little child in all of us, and that child rises up, and that child wants to have his way, and every now and then that child throws temper tantrums. I'm like Nancy Pelosi. I know a temper tantrum when I see it. She said, I know a temper tantrum when I see it, and Trump just throwing a temper tantrum. People want it their way when we ought to be trying to do it God's way. So he says, finally, brother, finally, sister, be strong in the Lord and in the power of whose might? God's might. What does that say to you? What does that speak to you? What does that get your attention? How does it get your attention? If I'm gonna be strong, I gotta draw it from God. Yeah, draw it from God. Not from my strength, it's God's strength. They say, be okay. strong in the Lord. And we got to pray, we got to read, we got to pull everything from God. So we gotta do spiritual stuff. Right. So Sister Henry, you were gonna say something? Be diligent in the word. And we gotta be diligent. Diligent. He says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You know, we are strong. Everybody in this room is strong. Everybody in this room is powerful. Everybody in this room can move mountains. But we can do greater things and the best things through God's might. Amen. Through the power of God. Th this, word, this word might means that there's increased strength when you work with the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. One day a boy went out and his daddy told him to move this big rock and he he picked it, he, he pushed it and kicked it and he couldn't move it. He used a stick to try to pry it up and he couldn't move it. His dad would say, why don't you use the tools you have? He said, dad, I did. I used every tool I could find. He said, no, you didn't because you didn't ask me to help you. <laughs> See, when we use all our tools, we depend on God. When we use all our tools, we, we know it's spiritual and even though we are spiritual creatures and we've been saved, sanctified, and woo, filled with this precious Holy Ghost, we still lack some things. Yeah. There's still some things that we need God help from. The songwriter said, Lord, I need you every day, every hour, every second, every minute I need you. 
And then he concludes, I need you now. It is in God's strength. It is in God's might that we are made strong. Amen. How many people in the room know that you don't cuss like you used to cuss because you depended on God? Anybody? Okay. How many of y'all ain't got that yet? She said she never really was a cuss person. I don't cuss the way I used to. So you've been changed. You've been transformed. How many of you used to talk about people but don't do it like you used to? I didn't say don't do it anymore. I mean like you used to. Okay. How many of you used to, used to gossip but you don't gossip like you used to? How many of you used to steal but you don't steal like you used to? How many of you uh, don't have ungodly sex like you used to? Oh, <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> my, my, my. Ain't talking about that in church, boy. Ain't talking about that. I know. So Amen. I'm not ashamed to say that. Amen. Amen. So, how many of you don't have low self esteem like you used to have? But see, the thing is, you can only get past it. You can only get delivered from it through God's word, Amen. through God's strength. So Paul said, finally, brother, be strong in the power of the Lord's might. And we have power. We can move some things. We can change some things that we trust in the Lord. Then he goes into this great thing that we all can recite very well in verse number 11, Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 11. Put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. This word wiles simply means the, the tricks of the devil, the schemes of the devil, the methods, the, the strategies of the devil. The devil got some strategies. And we think that he's tried everything in his bag. He's tried every trick in the book. But I'm here to tell you, even right now, the devil got some tricks that you never thought you would see. People will try to cut your legs out from under you because the devil is using them. When the devil is using you or when the devil is using one, folk would do in you. You know, every time there's a mass shooting, the first thing people say, I didn't think they would do that. It was such a quiet house over there. Mm -hmm. And this lady shooting, the, the Walmart shooting, the, the people said he was crazy, but we didn't think he was that crazy. <laughs> but when the devil has your heart, when the devil has your mind, you can snap in a minute. That's why we got to put on the whole world of God. We got to get we got to get dressed for the battle. We got to get dressed as we getting some things done. You got to get dressed like I tell young people: stop moping around, walk like you're going somewhere, act like you got something to do. Don't be the slowest person. Don't we be the weakest link. Same way it is when Paul says put on, this, this phrase put on means to sink down into it. It means to, to, to make sure that this armor covers your whole body. He says put on the whole armor. Don't just put on some pieces or a piece. You got to get dressed for battle. Every day you got to get dressed for battle. Every night you got to get dressed for battle. You have to be ready to fight. Yes, ma'am. Like the armor behind you, they ready, ready to go to war. Mm -hmm. behind you. Right. So we have to always be dressed for battle. We got to be ready to fight every day. You know, I know some of you Christian folk don't believe in fighting. Well, <laughs> I know y'all been saved a long time, <laughs> and you all don't believe in fighting. But there's more than one way to fight. Exactly. So we're going to talk about the spiritual so, way to fight. But I'm talking about when we say that when we're talking fight, 
in God's word. We don't mean with our feet. We mean with the word. Y'all sound so sanctimonious. <laughs> Y'all sound so <laughs> saved. If somebody hit me physically, I'm going to hit him back. What? Yes, <laughs> yes I am. He said, if anybody hit her, she's going to hit them back. My goodness. I know who to look to if somebody come in here messing with me. Say, Sister Henry, take care of my lightweight. <laughs> See, we have to understand, even though we're saved, we're in the middle of a spiritual warfare. Yes, sir. And we think, and I've been, I've been, I've been accused of being wrong. They say, preacher, stay in your church, sing your hymns, preach your sermon, and stay out of the community. And David asked the question, is there not a cause? You see, when Paul talks about this whole armor, 90% of it is defensive armor. 90% of it is when you get attacked. But you do know the Christian ought to advance and have some opposition sometimes. And the Christian ought to sometimes go on offense and not always defense. They say defense wins games. Defense gives you the victory. Paul says that today. Yes, defense gives us the victory. But you can't put the ball in the hoop. You can't get it across the goal line just playing defense. So sooner or later, my Christian brothers and sisters, you got to have an offensive stand. Yeah. Yeah. I think everybody in the room knows that your pastor doesn't mind being on the offense. Mm -hmm. And when we work for the Lord and we stand for the Lord and we fight on behalf of the Lord and with the Lord, sooner or later you're going to have to address some things. Yes, sir. Yeah. Sometimes people like, well, you know, I don't like trouble. I don't like opposition. I don't like problems. Guess what? Paul says to us today, problems going to find you. Problems know your address. It knows your Twitter account. Problem knows your email. And problems are going to find you. The question is, what you going to do when problems show up? The problem going to show up. Joe's witness is going to knock on your door. And you can't tell the child that says she ain't here. Because the child gonna go to the door and say she says she ain't here. Don't let anybody whip you at your house. Especially with the word. You say you're a Christian, be prepared. Put on the whole arm of God that you may even be, stand, be able to stand against the wiles, the schemes of the devil. The devil got some tricks. I oftentimes say to young boys and young girls who are raised in Sunday school, Bible study, church, when you get out there, that world's going to beat you to death because you don't know that arena. Mm -hmm. And you get, they get out there and they get involved in stuff that they really can't handle. They really don't know what they're doing. I didn't know what I was doing. I was in Sunday school, Bible study, in church, BTU. I mean, I had a real bad drug problem. They drugged me to church. Right. And guess what? I came to the bright lights of Houston, Texas and didn't know what was going on. It's a spiritual warfare. It's a real devil out there. Some people think the devil is dead. The devil is not real. Some people think that the devil is that guy with the pointed pitchfork with the pointed tail wearing neotards. The devil is real, and he's housing himself in individuals. Verse number 12 says, for we wrestle. This word wrestle is an all-out fight, not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Halloween just left, right? But the spirit of Halloween still exists. And we grew up trick or tree. We grew up celebrating Halloween. We grew up messing around with Ouija boards. We grew up doing zodiac signs and horoscope. But the spirit of the devil is still real. And the devil will use little common stuff that we play with to corrupt the minds of our children. And we give in. And we 
So, yeah, everybody else is doing it. The Bible says this is not a flesh and blood warfare. What does that mean? Not flesh and blood. What, what does that mean? This is not a flesh and blood warfare. Not to fight upon each other. Mm -hmm. So we we fighting against each other, and the devil just laughing at all of us. He started. <laughs> he, he, he's like the he's like the boy on the the boy on the on the playground that throws a rock and runs the other way and hides his hand and lets you hit somebody else. Mm -hmm. The devil is real. The devil is after us. Is he after us or is he really after God? He's still mad at God. Why is the devil mad at God, Sister Irvin? Why is the devil mad at God? I mean, such a good God. <laughs> so God is doing what's right. The devil wants you to do what's wrong. Anybody else? Why is the devil still poking fun of us because Sister Henry did Sister Paul? He wanted to be God himself. He wanted to be above God. He's he's jealous. Mm -hmm. He's jealous. Yes, well, ma'am. He's jealous of God and he tries to look for, see what God does and try to find out a way to undermine him. He tries to undermine God. He yes. tries to. What do you think about when, when I say ho, ho, ho? Santa Claus. <laughs> Santa Claus. Some people think Christmas. Some people think Santa Claus. Yeah. What does the angels around the throne of God say? Holy holy, 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 holy. Now look at this. Ho, ho, ho. Holy, holy, holy. See, the devil wants his, his, they don't go all the way, just the, like the scripture. The devil, the devil takes abbreviated forms. Yes, go with it. And he tries to seduce you. When Jesus was in the garden, Matthew chapter 6 and Matthew chapter 4, he was after he had fast. He, he, the Bible said after when he was hungry and the devil comes unto him, he comes and the devil quote parts of the scripture. Or he quotes scripture at the wrong time. Or he puts scripture in the wrong content. Ho, ho, ho. Holy, holy, holy. You heard the devil, the devil tell Jesus, Jesus, go on and jump. God will send his angels and, and his angels will bear you up. Mm -hmm. It was called scripture. Do you think uh, the, uh, the devil was mad at God because God gave us a way out? Because we all would have gone with the devil and hadn't God. God gave us a way out. How did God give us a way out? By sending his son. Yeah, you're going to make me shout in Sunday school. <laughs> he gave Jesus. He gave us a way out. When you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 31 and, 30, 31 and 13, it says, whatever you do, whatever you do, good or bad, whatever you do in word or deed, do it unto the Lord. And then it says, God has given you a way out. God has given you a way to escape. So right before you do that sin, if you're saying God is giving you a way to escape, he, he said, he tell you, get up and walk away. Just before you punched him, God gave you a way to escape and you still punched him. The greatest he that's in you. When you do, do that, the greatest one is in you. Mm -hmm. He's in and you. And if you do complete the deed, God still gives you a way out. God gives because you a way out. All you have to do is ask for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Amen. So you have, you have Adam and Eve, they sinned, they went against God. And so when they sinned, they went against God. God allowed them to to allow, God killed the lamb to for them to wrap up in. And then, even though he wouldn't let them get to the other tree, he did give them a way back to him. And he planned it from day one. As soon as Adam and Eve sinned, God planned them to have a way out. So the devil is mad about that. The devil is upset about it. And let me tell you, as we talk about spiritual warfare, the devil hears us. And he will challenge us on this spiritual warfare. Some of us will be challenged before we even leave this building. The devil knows how to challenge you. And the devil will make sure that he keeps the saints upset with each other. Jealousy, 
in the strife. We want y'all to fight it all the time, all the time. Yeah. I heard a pastor say one time that, well, I heard that a pastor say it one time, that if what, if something wasn't going on in the church, that people wouldn't at, at each other in the church, he will start something. Let me tell you, I don't want to start anything. I like it when it's quiet. <laughs> I like it when it's smooth sailing. But you do know when things get started, you have to face those things. He says, put on the whole arm of God, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. We wrestle against powers, against rulers in this spiritual atmosphere. There's a wicked, a wicked realm up there. It's a wicked realm. There's wickedness all around us. We can't see it, but it's real. If you if you uh, were in this room, you cannot see uh, radio frequencies and television frequencies, but you know what they're there. And what you have to do is bring in a radio or a TV and tune them in. Wickedness is all around us, and the devil is trying to tune it in to us. But we got God on our side. And we just have to use the weapons of this warfare that God has given us. Any questions or comments? We don't wrestle against this, this flesh, this frailty we have. We wrestle against spiritual things in high place. Even the trouble that we go through day to day with teachers, principals, neighbors, family members, friends, it's a spiritual thing. If you can look past the physical, if you can look past the argument, guess what? You can see it spiritual. But you know, you got to be a spiritual being to see the spiritual fight. It takes a spiritual man to lead a spiritual woman. And if there is any chink in the armor, the devil is going to expose it. And the devil is going to usurp that authority. God has a way of putting us all back together. It's a spiritual thing. Can we get can we get through that? Can we get that through to each other? This is a spiritual fight. And guess what? The fight is an all-out onslaught. I mean it never stops. Every day, the devil is on his job. There's one thing about the devil. The devil knows what he's doing, and he get up every morning doing what he's called to do. What if Christians would get up every morning, lay down every night, doing what they're called to do? The devil is busy. It's not enough to acknowledge that. He is busy, but we got to get dressed for the battle. Got to get dressed for the fight. And I know y'all little Christians, y'all don't like to fight. <laughs> you, you don't like, I don't like turmoil. I, I don't like, well, just because you turn your head to it, that means it's going to go away. <laughs> it's a spiritual attack. And the devil is advancing. The devil is attacking. And the devil is all around us, making things worse for us. And even when the devil makes things good for us, it's only temporary. Some people thought, if I could just win the lotto, mm -hmm. all my troubles would be gone. Now they got more troubles, more suicides, more and they broke in three years. Mm -hmm. I contend if the Lord blesses me with $26, $50 million, I have more than that when Jesus gets back. Mm -hmm. But you can't operate in the flesh. You can't flaunt it. You can't act like you're on top of the world. You can't start mistreating people. Yeah. The devil, the devil wants you to act a fool. Verse number 13. Well, for take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. He says the evil day is coming. And let me serve you notice. The evil day is here. Matter of fact, the evil day is every day. And, but you got to be able to stand. And you can stand. You can make it. You're able to do this. 
But you got to do it through God. And the power of his strength. So you got to be able to stand. How will you withstand in the evil day? Somebody. How will you be able to withstand the onslaught of the devil? How will you be able? So see, Henry looked like she got answered. Oh, well, the, the arm of God. I mean, the whole arm. The whole, you have to put on the armor. Put on the whole arm. You know, no, go ahead. No, and it's right behind it. Oh, it is. Oh, okay. Okay, so this is the deal. Many times when I heard put on the whole arm of God, I spent a lifetime wondering, how do I do that? <laughs> it sounds good from the pulpit. It sounds good from the from the Sunday school class. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You hear people all the time, so Sermon said, put on the whole arm of God. It is easy to talk that stuff when you're not going through stuff. That's right. That's right. When you're going through, mm -hmm. you don't want to hear it. Sometimes, sometimes people say, I, I don't want to hear that church stuff right now. Yeah. <laughs> See, as Christians, we have to understand even the conversation when we're trying to help somebody, it's best to just listen. That's right. Just, just keep silent. Just, just be quiet for a minute. We were loading the truck one day to take to some underprivileged children. We were just loading the truck, and this lady was just talking, just talking. I'm, I'm swearing and loading, talking and talking and talking. And then she said, "Pastor, uh, what you want? I want silence. <laughs> I don't want you to hand me another box, another cucumber. I just want silence." I mean, when there's rest in the air, let me have some of it. Sometimes when people are going through things, our presence speaks louder than our mouths. Just be there. Because their minds are far away from you. But they always remember that you showed up. They always remember that you called just to see how they're doing. I always remember a card or a text or doesn't have to be see the thing with Christians is that we think we're spiritual when we say a lot nope. one of the most aggravating things to me but brother Bentley is you ask somebody how they're doing oh I'm blessed and highly favored of the Lord and the Lord has truly blessed me and I'm doing so I'm like man I just ask you how you doing <laughs> And let me tell you, there's, there's one woman that was blessed and highly favored. And that was Jesus' mother. The, the Bible says she's blessed and highly favored among women. So these slogans, these statements, that's not evangelistic. That's not reaching people. It really is running folk out, including me. I just asked you how you're doing. I just asked you, is thing, are things okay? I just, I didn't need a sermon right now. <laughs> but people think they're spiritual. And they think that this spirituality needs to be pushed on everybody. Francis Nassi says, says this. He says, preach the word always and when necessary, Use words. Always preach the word. Always preach the gospel. And if necessary, use words. What he's saying is live out the gospel. He's saying show your life. Let people see you going through life in such a way that they know there goes a Christian. Now, but if you open your mouth and say crazy stuff and gossip with them or or get down on their level, then guess what? Mm -hmm. You just shot your witness. That's right. You just stopped preaching the gospel. Even yeah. with your homies, your friends, your dog, mm -hmm. your girlfriend, you know, just, just chill for a minute. It's going to be all right. So it says, the evil day will come and you need to be able to stand. You must be able to withstand what the devil is about to do and what the devil is doing. So verse 14, he says, and many people take verse 13 and 14 and run them together because they say, having done all to stand, stand. Mm -hmm. 
After you've done all you can do to stand, stand. So how do we stand? We stand through Christ. We allow him to stand for us. See, I never had a big brother growing up, but I had an older cousin, Rico, and when he showed up on the basketball court or the baseball field or on the playground, I didn't have to say much. He just showed up. And when he showed up, everybody wanted to be my friend. Because I didn't have to stand for myself. He stood for me. And when he showed up, he didn't even have to say a mumbling word. He just showed up. Seven years older, he just showed up. Wasn't a big old guy, but he just showed up. See, people believe that they have to run from big people because big people can break them in half. But in this spiritual warfare, God is the greater one and he's in you. Having done all to stand, stand therefore. And he says, having your lawns girded about with truth. So here, if you notice, he, this is considered a belt with a skirt that drips down. And these cover his lawns. If you ever, Lord, should I say that? No, seriously. It, it covers vital errors of the body. And if a soldier is hit between here and here, he's taken out. But the Bible teaches us to put on the whole arm of God to cover our lords, whether you male or female, put it on. These are vital areas. This area, once this area is attacked, it's over. You gotta cover it up. And he says, cover it up with truth. A lie will run a mile before the truth put his shoes on. And the truth is only in Jesus Christ. The truth only comes through God. The truth is the word of God. The truth is Jesus Christ. The truth is what we have to stand on. That's all we have. This word truth means integrity. Say what you mean, mean what you say, do what you say. Do what you do when no one is looking as if the whole world is looking. Walk in integrity. Walk in truth. Let people see it. As children of God, we need to remember when we're saying that we're Christians, there's a difference in saying we're Christians and trying to live Christ-like. Mm -hmm. Because Christ didn't always do a lot of talking. It was how he lived. And we need to lead and live by example. That is also wearing our armor. So people are watching us. Yes. People watching how we act, watching what we Absolutely. do. Absolutely. Watching how we carry ourselves. Am I the only one in this room that's not proud of everything I've done? Mm -hmm. I am. I was so disappointed in myself. <laughs> I knew I had let myself down, let my folk down, let God down. I was just so disappointed. But I thank God I came to Sunday school this morning because Sister Carter said God gives me a way out. Right. He's merciful. Amen. He has grace. He does. So we have to keep our, our lawns, keep our areas covered, keep and every morning, I, I told you, I, I used to wonder how to put it on. Every morning you wake up, you need to pray through this. Lord, thank you. Lord, bless me. Lord, cover my lawns. And another thing about your lawns is the area where, where your innermost being is. It, it's sometimes the Bible talks about your bowels. Whenever a person is depressed, whenever a person is excited, whenever a person is, a, is joyful, it comes from your lungs. Whenever a woman has a new baby, it comes from her lungs. But it says, having your lungs girded up with truth and having on the breastplate, the bless, the breastplate, the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate of righteousness. And we get back to living right. Get back to 
making sure you have on this breastplate. This part of the armor was important because if a person is hit here, they're pretty much taken out. And you're gonna you're gonna hear throughout this lesson that every part of the armor is 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 important because guess what? It says in the first verse, the second verse, uh, in 10 and 11, it said, put on the whole arm. Put on all of it. And see, some people choose this over that. And it's neither this nor that, it's all of it. You gotta put on the breast breastplate of righteousness. And you ought to be praying, Lord, I'm putting it on. Lord, I ask you to bless me through it. Lord, I'm putting on the whole arm of God because this is protection for me. Remember, the devil is on an all-out onslaught. The devil is attacking. The devil is on offense. The devil is coming after you. Jesus said to Peter, 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 the devil has asked for you. And he wants to sift you. Like sifting wheat. The devil is after you. You can think you have arrived if you want to. You can think you can sit back and relax if you want to. The devil will come up to you on you like COVID-19. Sooner than quick and before right now. And let me tell you, the devil wants to take you out. When you deal with um when you deal with uh, martial arts, one of the things they teach you is these, this area, straight down here, if you attack any of this area, it becomes a deadly area for the victim. You got your solar plexus here. <laughs> you got your real cage there. You got everything that covers your heart there. This, this, if, if, if the opponent takes out this area, you done. You out of here. Paul says to us, whatever we do, gird up our lives, make sure we keep it covered with the truth. Truth is honesty. Truth is vulnerability. Truth is revelation. This revelation comes from God. Then he says the breastplate of righteousness of the believer. These are vital organs in the chest area. This says that the believer's life must be a disciplined life. One year to doing the right thing according to God. You know, you ought to be disciplined enough to do what's right. Now, having said that, I messed up. I fall short. I sin. And I'm telling you to do what's right. And you ought to be telling me to do what's right. And we ought to live right. Our lifestyle. You know, there's a difference in falling in sin and having a lifestyle of sin. That's why the senior, the senior saint said, don't live in sin. Don't lay down in sin. Don't get up in sin. It says live a, a life that is right. So you got to shield your heart, the breastplate. You know, you know, I, I think kind of crazy sometimes, but, but I, I just kind of say what I say. Um, people say, how did they die? And then they will say, he or she had a heart attack. My statement is, everybody who dies have a heart attack. Every single person. It may be a secondary reason for their death. It may be a primary reason for their death. But if a person has a heart attack and it's a deadly heart attack and that you can't revive them, they're out of here. If a person dies from anything else, sooner or later their heart is going to stop. The devil want to shut your heart down. The devil wants to kill you by taking away your heart. But we got on the best thing breastplate of righteousness and we live a righteous life and because you live in a righteous life the devil going to gear it up a little bit I think I've told you several times I never wanted to be a preacher I watched the deacons of the church at St. James Baptist Missionary Baptist Church three and a half miles south three and a half miles south of Indianola Mississippi 
And I would watch the deacons on 49 Highway. I would watch the deacons. I wanted to be just like the deacons because they were servants. They were men of God. They could teach, and they, were, they had a righteous life. I never wanted to be a preacher for three reasons. Number one, I didn't like the pedestal that the people put the preacher on. Number two, I didn't like the pedestal that the preacher put himself on. And the third reason is what we're talking about today. I knew that the devil would open up both barrels and attack me the moment I accept my call. So here I am. And you can bet he's been shooting. Therefore, I have to cover my heart, the innermost being, the control center, the thing that can keep me, have to cover it. Because if I don't cover my heart, I surely die. Die a spiritual death. Verse 15, having your feet shod with the preparation of gospel of peace. There are two things here. The, the soldier wore sandals. And the sandals were made in such a way that they could move quickly. And because when a war hit, it's time to move quickly. Boy, we would be such a blessed group of people if we could teach our young people how to move quickly. Yeah. <laughs> we, if you came to our house and you were dragging your feet, <laughs> you would get a whole lecture. We just don't drag our feet. We don't move slowly. And, and I never will forget Daddy had a phone next to his recliner. The phone would ring. He would holler in the back room and say, hey, the phone ring. And I was never bold enough to tell him, Daddy, you sitting there by the phone. So he must have thought I was thinking it. So he said, so, so he said uh, that's why I got you here so you can answer the phone. And when daddy called or mama called, we couldn't drag our feet or we couldn't walk. We would run full speed to see what they're saying. Lord, if we could teach our children how to get in a hurry, it would save their life. So the, the soldier shoes were made in such a way that they were protective. And it wasn't the kind of sandals we know. They were protective sandals and it allowed the soldier to move quickly. Look at what he says, the gospel of peace. Number one, we ought to be swift to carry the word of God to a dying world. We have to spread the gospel. We got to get excited about spreading the gospel. We got to get in a hurry about spreading the gospel of peace. And this gospel of peace is that man ought to be in peace with God. We ought to be peacemakers. Men have to be at peace with God. If men are not at peace with God, then, then they are enemies to God. It's our responsibility to move in a swift way that we can carry the gospel good news to others. Questions or comments? Then he says in verse 16, above all, having the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked. Now, this is not the shield that they used during that day. This shield was an oblong, oval-shaped shield. And it was big enough where if the, a soldier crossed down, it could cover the whole soldier. Yeah. Now, they just ran out of metal on this one. <laughs> it wouldn't have made a good presentation, I guess. But the shield covered the whole man much like the ride gear that police officers use today. Yeah. It covers the whole man. All he has to do is make a quick move and it covers him. It says, whatever you do, make sure you carry the shield of faith. Faith is the assurance that God got you back. Mm. Faith is the confidence that we have in God. Wherewith you can, you can be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked. When, they sh when the, the enemy would shoot arrows, it would be arrows with fire on them. And as they came through the air, it had an accelerant on it. And this accelerant would be su in such a way that even as it moved through the air, it would keep the fire alive. And they were looking for the soldier to have a, a kink in his armor. 
a little space, a little spot in his armor, just enough for him to get the dart through. And that dart would set the soldier on fire, even though he had an armor. So in order to, to prevent that, they had the shield. And, and Paul says to us, we need this shield of faith. And as we have this shield of faith, we're able to, to ward off, to stop the fiery darts. It's called a shield of faith. And our faith is that I have confidence in the God that I serve that I'm going to make it. Anybody ever have faith every now and then? Anybody in the room? Does anybody have to have faith to make it from day to day? He says, take on the shield of faith. This shield covers the whole body once you make a quick move and, and squat down. So we need faith. If we're going to work with the Lord, if we're going to stop the fiery darts, these darts have fire on it. And it burns us. And it's ultimately designed to kill us. We need faith. In the morning, we ought to pray, Lord, I'm putting on the shield of faith. Lord, I'm trusting you to make this a great day. Lord, I'm putting it in your hands. Lord, the devil is out to kill me. The devil is out to destroy me. Remember, the opening introduction was about racism. And before 2016, the man promised you, I'm going to take y'all out. At least two races I'm going to get rid of. You're bringing in drugs. I'm going to get rid of I'm going to shut everything down. And guess what? He did. Sometimes the devil will tell you what he's going to do, and then we sit naively and don't believe what the devil said. The devil said, I'm going to get you. And we still playing hot scopping yeah. and, and playing patty cake. No, we taking each other out. Yeah. And the devil is using us to take each other out. Take each other out. And so every time Trump stands up, he got this tall guy with dreads with the sign that says, Black for Trump. Yeah, you see that. And he shows up at every rally. <laughs> and he gets paid well. See, what we have to understand is the devil wants you to be a sellout. And it's not even worth it. Because guess what? Like Mordecai would say to Esther, God has brought you for such a time like this. And just because you're in the palace, don't think that you're going to be let go. Just because you're standing behind Trump doesn't mean that you, you're no longer black. So, so he says to us today, we need to have faith that we can ward off the fiery darts. Verses 17 and 18. And take the helmet, the helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation. It covered both the head and the eyes. The helmet of salvation. First of all, it's saying you must be, you got to be, you have to be born again. You need to be saved. God protects his own. Says you need to be saved. Whatever you do, take on the helmet of salvation. And not only this, this helmet protects the central system of your whole life. Right before the doctor pronounced the person dead, the doctor says he or she is brain dead. Means there's no activity. So the devil is trying to take all activity from your central uh, compartment. The devil is trying to take it away from you. You need to be born again. Then he says, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. This is our offensive weapon. The sword of the spirit. You need the sword of the spirit, the sword of the spirit in your hand, in your head, and in your heart. You need the word of God in your hand when it's necessary. In your head so you can memorize scripture. And in your heart so you can live right. You need the sword of the spirit. And he, he depicts it here as a, a knife type dagger. And what it was, it was a knife that goes in and it took great force to pull it back out. You ever seen how a hook is made? The hook goes in the fish and you gotta work with it to come out. 
And when you bring it out, you bring all the intestines and everything out. We got to have the sword of the spirit. It's our offensive weapon. And we got to know the word, live the word, act through the word, and pray the word. The final one says that we ought to pray always in all prayer, with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. We ought to talk to God. Oh, if Christians would just talk to God. A basketball coach, L.M. Brown, would say it like this. Not that he was a saint or anything, but he had good sense when it came to the Lord. L.M. Brown would say, the only reason he called, if you got caught messing up in his class, he said, Nicodemus, what are you doing? <laughs> and then he would say, the only reason this world is still spinning on its axis and rotating and reviving is because people are praying on planet Earth. Ellen Brown says that the world is being held together because people are praying. So he says, praying always, not sometimes, pray continuously. And in your prayer, you ought to supplicate, meaning that you ought to pray for somebody else. Don't just pray for yourself, pray for somebody else. Make sure when you're praying for you, your family, your friends, pray for somebody you don't know. And this word supplicate means that you're praying like Jesus prayed in the garden, like until sweat dropped like great drops of blood. Calling on God. God, I need you right now, right away. Watch you there on two with the perseverance and supplication of all the saints. Meaning praying your way through. <laughs> praying through the process. Walking through the process. Some people have been sick a long time. And in the process, you got to pray with perseverance. Means don't give up. Don't give out. And don't get in. <laughs> Stick with it. Questions or comments? Yes, sir. Well, like a 17 year old said, taking home the whole armor. And I was thinking about when you said Jesus, when he was hungry, after he had his fast 40 days and 40 nights, the devil come to him when he thought he was weak. Yes. He said, this. He said who you are, command these uh, stone turn to bread. And yeah. Jesus used the sword, the word, to fight him off. He says, it has been written that yes. man shall not live by bread alone. And that's what the, that's what the helmet, I mean, that sword. And the word means exactly. Know, yeah. So the word of God, we got to use it. Yeah. We got to know it. Yeah. And so we got to regurgitate it. Don't know it the problem with the church, Christian church say they're Christian, but they don't know the word. I mean, everything fades them. I mean, they fall out over nothing. They still moaning and groaning over the queen. How old was the queen? 96? They still crying over the queen as if they thought she was going to live forever. Everything just tears some people up. But when you know the word, when you speak the word, when you live the word, you know for sure that the word is real. That's right. And he said he will not do out every time. Oh, Speak right. the word. So the word. we have to know how to say God, your word says. Right. When, yes. you, when you fight. And that's, that's why I always word. tell you, pray the word. Pray the word. Pray what God is saying. Every parent loves to hear their child repeat what the parents had said. God loves to hear you repeat what God is saying. God moves on his word. He acts on his word. We have, our, we have our, our offensive weapon in the word of God. And no, we can't walk around with a big old Bible all the time. That's why I say it needs to be in your hand when it's fitting. It needs to be in your head all the time. And it needs to be in your heart. Amen. Oh. I can tell who's in the word by what's in their heart. One final example, and I'll leave you alone. In Georgia, a man pulled over a white lady. Police officer pulled over a white lady. And he pulled him over. He's standing on the right side of the car. And he's telling her, go ahead and get your driver's license. And the lady says, I'm not going to move because I see what you all do to people when they move. Mm -hmm. The police officer said, no, but we only kill black people. Yeah. So go on and get your license. Mm -hmm. So when the police chief heard that, he made this statement. He says, I don't know what's in his heart. But I do know what came out of his mouth. And the recommendation is that he be terminated. 
Because what's in your heart is going to come out your mouth. And so he didn't want an officer on his team that had this stuff in his heart. And he was kind enough to say, I don't know what's in his heart, but I do know what came out of his mouth. What he was saying was, it's in his heart, or it was in his heart, so it came out of his mouth. So the author points us to systemic racism where it is set up for us to lose. But even in racism, it is a spiritual warfare. Don't even fight that with knives and guns. You got to fight that through the word of God. That's why we got to pray for leaders, even if they're not our leaders. Right now, we ought to be praying for Georgia. We ought to be praying for Pastor Warnock. I mean, from the look of it, now, when, when a person with good sense look at it, sister him, they say, ain't no way. <laughs> When a good when a when a person look at it, Sister Irvin, they said there is no way Herschel Walker can represent anybody. I know that's not right. Not even McKay. Mm -hmm. But we ought to be praying now. That's right. That's because right. this is a spiritual warfare. Yes, it is. And they've already said we don't care who represents us, we just want number 50. Mm -hmm. That's all they want. They, they want the, the, power. the, the power. Yeah. They, they just want, they want the power. So what we have to understand is even in what we see from day to day, it's a spiritual warfare. Yeah. Any questions or comments? I just wanted to share about the helmet with the eyes. Yes, I think that eyes, your eyes can signal and send to your heart a lot of that personality and all of the evil things. Even though we got all this bigness here, that eye. Mm -hmm. Once you see that I see it to tell you, and if you're not praying, you can just go all out just because of what you've seen. You may not yeah. even know the truth. You may not, yeah. but, but that I can tell you. So that I, we have to really pray that God will, you know, focus us to be thinking of good things. Mm -hmm. That I yes. will send something negative to you real quick. And whenever you see something, if, you got to make sure you got your shield and your helmet on right. because what you see. You can't walk by that. You got to walk by faith. Because that's why we have to always be conscious every day. Lord, I'm putting on my armor. I'm trusting you. Yeah. Lord, I'm going to bless your name through this process. Regardless of what it looks like. And he says, finally, in verse 18, be persistent. Persevere. Fight through it. That's why you used to hear your big mom in the kitchen. Moaning. Mm -hmm. They said the devil doesn't know what you're saying right. when you're talking to the Lord. Right. You got to press your way through. Okay. Press and push, push your way through. It got to a point during Sister David's cancer, she asked the question, am I going to make it? I said, we don't see what the Lord says about it. And when you see what the Lord says, you can press your way through. You got to have faith in God and just press, press your way through. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you now, Lord. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you, Father God, for this moment. We thank you, Father, for blessing us. Thank now, Lord, you. we ask you to continue to keep us mindful of equipping ourselves with the whole arm of God. Bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Amen. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand. And if you're giving by way of Zell, you can do so by zelling your gift to lifting.jesus at yahoo.com lifting got Jesus at yahoo.com is our Zell account. If you want to mail it by way of U.S. Postal Service, you can do so by mailing it to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Please join us at 1030 for our service. Today is our youth day service. Please join us as our youth uh, are on display today and and they show us the tools that God has given them. Thank you and God bless you.